brothers and sisters, please stand as we begin our Eucharistic celebration. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess... To Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord our God, the constant gladness of being devoted to you, for it is full and lasting happiness to serve with constancy the author of all that is good. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the first book of Maccabees. From the descendants of Alexander's officers, there sprung a sinful offshoot, Antiochus Epiphanes, son of King Antiochus, once a hostage at Rome. He became king in the year 137 of the kingdom of the Greeks. In those days, there appeared in Israel men who were breakers of the law, and they seduced many people, saying, Let us go and make an alliance with the Gentiles all around us, since we separated from them, many evils have come upon us. The proposal was agreeable. Some from among the people promptly went to the king, and he authorized them to introduce the way of living of the Gentiles. Thereupon, they built a gymnasium in Jerusalem according to the Gentile custom. They covered over the mark of their circumcision and abandoned the Holy Covenant. They allied themselves with the Gentiles 
and sold themselves to wrongdoing. Then the king wrote to his whole kingdom that all should be one people, each abandoning his particular customs. All the Gentiles confirmed to the command of the king, and many children of Israel were in favor of his religion. They sacrificed to idols and profaned the Sabbath. On the fifteenth day of the man Chislev, in the year 145, the king erected the horrible abomination upon the altar of burnt offerings, and in the surrounding cities of Judah, they built pagan altars. They also burned incense at the door of the houses and in the streets. Any scrolls of the law which they found, they tore up and burnt. Whoever was found with a scroll of the covenant and whoever observed the law was condemned to death by royal decree. But many in Israel were determined and resolved in their hearts not to eat anything unclean. They preferred to die rather than to be defiled with unclean food or to profane the holy covenant, and they did die. Terrible affliction was upon Israel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Give me life, O Lord, and I will do your commands. Give me life, O Lord, and I will do your commands. Indignation seizes me because of the wicked who forsake your law. Give me life, O Lord, and I will do your commands. Though the snares of the wicked are twined about me, your law I have not forgotten. Give me life, O Lord, and I will do your commands. Redeem me from the oppression of men, that I may keep your precepts. Give me life, O Lord, and I will do your commands. I am attacked by malicious persecutors who are far from your law. Give me life, O Lord, and I will do your commands. Far from sinners is salvation, because they seek not your statutes. Give me life, O Lord, and I will do your commands. I beheld the apostates with loathing, because they kept not to your promise. Give me life, O Lord, and I will do your commands. Please stand. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus approached Jericho, a blind man was sitting by the roadside begging. And hearing a crowd going by, he inquired what was happening. They told him, Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. He shouted, Jesus, son of David, have pity on me. The people walking in front rebuked him, telling him to be silent. But he kept calling out all the more, Son of David, have pity on me. Then Jesus stopped and ordered 
that he be brought to him. And when he came near, Jesus asked him, What do you want me to do for you? He replied, Lord, please, let me see. Jesus told him, Have sight, your faith has saved you. He immediately received his sight and followed him, giving glory to God. And when they saw this, all the people gave praise to God. My sisters and brothers, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Good afternoon po sa inyong lahat. Reflecting on our readings today, Monday of the 33rd week in Ordinary Time, particularly the Gospel, I remember a story of a certain boy about this man who is also blind that asking for money outside a store. So nakita siya nung bata, itong beggar na ito, and when the boy, the little boy, so this beggar, he approached his father and came across him and said to his father, Daddy, I pity that beggar. Can you give me some coins? So the father gave him two one peso coins. So the little boy immediately ran towards the beggar and dropped the coins in the can. Then the beggar said, Thank you, little boy, but I was expecting a five peso coins. My dear brothers and sisters, unlike this beggar, the blind man in today's gospel begged not for money, but for something else. He was so fortunate. He was on the roadside when Jesus passed by. Not knowing what was going on, he asked them, and when he heard that the name of Jesus, he shouted, not for money, but for healing and mercy. He was so desperate to see the world that through his persistent shouting, he was able to catch the attention of Jesus. My dear brothers and sisters, like the blind man, many are also desperate and persistent, but in two different states. First, many are desperate to get promoted, to get the position they want to have lots of money, to be affirmed, praised, and recognized that they do everything they can, good and bad, just to alleviate their desperation. Second, 
just like in the gospel, many are desperate and persistent to experience the healing, mercy, and love of God. The eyes of faith makes these people strive to free themselves of the strain of suffering. Indeed, Jesus works wonders for those people who surrender their lives to God, who in the simplest way trust and love others. Do good deeds and are persistent in prayer. We can ask ourselves, in which of the two states I belong? In which of these two states where I am desperate and persistent? Let us emulate from the blind man in today's gospel. Let us continuously do our best and persistently come to the Lord and receive His healing mercy and love so that in turn we could be instruments of His healing mercy and love to others. Please stand. We ask God, our Father, to open our eyes so that we may clearly see His path and follow Him wholeheartedly. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. That the leaders of the church, through the witness of humble lives, may show us the direction to God the Father's heavenly kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That through our act of kindness, we may always seek out those who are despised, rejected, or unloved in our society. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That like the blind man of Jericho, we may have firm confidence in the healing presence of Jesus and follow him in the pathway of life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick and those who suffer from failing eyesight or blindness may find the healing and comfort. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer, that the dead may receive eternal rest and perpetual light in the glory of God's kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father in heaven, fill us with your love and dispel the darkness from our lives so that we may work in the light of Christ your Son, who lives and reigns with you now and forever. Amen. Please be seated.
please stand. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy Church. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that what we offer in the sight of your majesty may obtain for us the grace of being devoted to you and gain for us the price of everlasting happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift, since our praises add nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. And so, in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Please stand. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church is spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep into the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. 
through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Lamb of, Lamb God, of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Please kneel. Friends, this is Jesus, our Savior, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we who are called to receive him. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ. Amen.
Please stand. Let us pray. We have partaken of the gifts of this sacred mystery, humbly imploring, O Lord, that what your Son commanded us to do in memory of Him may bring us growth in charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.